Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. Today I'm going to be talking about the ink markup language, which is a markup language that is used for writing visual novels and dialogue that can be easily used in Unity games or used in isolation. Uh, for this, I will be talking about the syntax that is attached to this language, how that stuff works, how to do complex story branching, and all the sorts of things that this markup language offers. Um, and really just giving a rundown of how this works. If you want to use this language in its native editor, the Inky editor is going to be linked down below in the description where you can install it, and that's what I'm going to be using in the course of this video. I highly suggest using the Inky editor for working with ink files. It's, in my opinion, the best way to deal with all this. If you don't like the Inky editor, there are alternatives. You can use Notepad++ or Notepad Regular if you are absolutely insane. Uh, just understand the syntax, make sure you are very good with the syntax and loyal to it, and make sure that you end the file extension with a .inc. If you are someone like me who really likes Visual Studio Code, then you can also use that. There is an extension for Visual Studio Code that offers the .inc uh, syntax highlighting, as well as the .inc export. Um, so with really no more delay, let's start getting into the syntax. So to start off, Alrighty, so let's start off with the main function and really just the basic syntax. So the syntax at its basic level is a markup language. So anything you type into it will display automatically on the screen. As we can see, if I type in a demo of the Inky markup language on the screen, on the display, it will display that. That is the pure syntax basics. There's two other things that are like very, very pure basics, and one is comments, and this can be done by a double backslash or by the use of this multi line syntax, and it will knock a line out of display. Those lines that are inside the multi line syntax will not display on the console. But let's say we have two lines, I mean, again, talking about basic syntax that we want to be on the same line, you can just use this concept called glue. So that's like the purest parts of the syntax. But I mean, nobody would really be using this for dialogue and choice and visual novels if all it could do was basic markup. So we do actually have some conditional logic here, and that is going to be seen in choices. So your choices are written in this language on the most basic level using stars. So you put a star before a choice option. So here we have choices yes, and we have choices no, and they're both demarked by a star here. You also notice a third choice, and I'm quickly gonna show why we have that third choice. So if I click yes, it's gonna say yes, and this is looping back to here, and I'll explain how that works in a minute. But you can click no, as you can see, when it loops back to yes, it doesn't actually give you the choice to choose yes again. So when you, now you only have the choice of no, and it's going to say, hey, there's no remaining choices left. Let's move on with the display. So how does that all work? Let's break this down step by step. First off, when we choose yes, you can see that it's saying you choose yes, that's the display that it's outputting, but then it's going to loop back. And how is it doing that? Well, because we have these little things that are called knots, and those are like clusters of internal markup and code that we want to run, and they're organized. These organizational things can be referenced using these markers. And essentially, these markers tell the markup language that, hey, I want to jump control from where I am back to this point. But why is it when we go back to this point? I mean, if you look, you don't have the yes option again. And that has to do with the star. So in a, in a bit, I will uh, show off the other type of choices, but the basic type of choice, the star, only lets the user choose it once. So after it's chosen, we can't choose it again. But there's only two choices, and both of these choices seem to loop back. So what do we do then? Well, that's where we have this fallback choice. So after we've exhausted all of our choice options, we can use this fallback choice, which is demarked by a star and then a reference arrow, and it will say, this is the option we choose when no other option exists and it will run that choice as a final answer. And that lets us push into our next bracket of code. And that's gonna be talking about how we can fix that issue of the stars. So I would say that using the stars is really good if you have dialogue that you don't want repeating over and over again. You want the player to exhaust their options. Let's say you have an NPC that gives advice and you want the player to be able to constantly ask the advice in case they forget. How do you handle that? You handle that with a plus syntax. Replace the star with a plus, and this choice, if I click ham, will still 
be available to the player and I can click ham as many times as I want. If I click rocks, I can click rocks as many times as I want. So the plus syntax will offer the alternative if you have a set logic that you want the player to be able to repeat the dialogue over and over again. Moving on, we want to talk about something else that's very important for any programming language, and that's variables. So if we look here, there are two types of variables. There's a third, but it's very hard to work with, and I honestly don't suggest it, so I'm just going to talk about the main two. And those are regular variables, defined by var, and constants, defined by c-o-n-s-t. Variables, uh, regular variables are mullable. What that means is that you can change them. As we can see here, the variable of example gets changed to be added 5 to it, and then it prints the example. You cannot change a constant. Constant values are constant. The second they're defined, they cannot be changed. They're immobile. What can we use these two for? Well, let's say we have a player HP. The total HP, we might want to make that a set value. We might want the total HP of the player to be 100 the entire game. So we can set a constant that's HP 100, and it will stay 100 the entire time. But if we're talking about the in-moment HP, you know, the player's got to take damage. That would be a variable. The player's damage can go up or down. How can we control the logic of what's going on with these variables? Well, simply use this little squiggly line and then type in your variable and whatever you want to do with it. This is more very programming-centric. If you know some basic programming, then you can use that programming knowledge in these commands. If you want to print a variable, it's also very simple. You just simply use the rich text syntax, which is basically the, as you can see on the screen, the little squiggly brackets around the variable's name. And then it will print the variable's value. As we can see, in our case, the variable is five. So we have variables now. Let's move into something a little bit more uh, complicated called weave. Weave is where the beauty of choice making really shows its worth here. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have A, A2, B, B2, C3, C4, C, C, C2. How does this work? Well, if I click A, it will give me the options of the internal options of A. So in this case, B and B2, but also C3, C4, C2, and C2. So if I click this, and it's just going to run all the way through. Why is this important? Well, it basically gives the player, I mean, uh, the person running this, the, the editor, the ability to make multi-depth choices. Let's say you have a conversation and you want it to branch off that there's five internal depths. You can do that with stars. I don't personally think you should. I think you should use uh, references and nested knots. But if you want to make a nested, a very nested choice, um, you know, there's if else's, this would be your way of doing it. And that's called weave. Um, moving from weave, we can talk about something called files. So files are something that is going to be used as you increasingly use more and more uh, ink files. So you could theoretically put an entire story of like 6,000 lines in one ink file. You could. It would just be very messy and very hard to follow and read and organize. So chances are you're going to want to have more than one ink file. And your way of doing this is using include in all caps, your desired file's name dot ink. And make sure that your desired file is in the same folder as the ink file that you're editing in. If not, this can get a little bit messy. The, the good thing about Inky's editor, by the way, if you're using the editor, you can actually just easily do this just by clicking this button down here, add new include, and it will make a new file that will automatically build the include file, uh, reference in the file you're working in. You don't have to do any extra work. But from there, we should talk about some methods and arguments. So methods and arguments aren't something you're going to probably be using a lot unless you're more focused on the programming side of this. Um, I mean, you could just use C Sharp and its uh, operatives if you're working with Unity. But let's say there's something you want to be able to do a bunch of times over and over again in your VM that is more like a function in programming. You can do that via methods and arguments. So basically, this is the syntax for writing one. You just write the name of your method, and then in the parentheses would be the type of argument. 
Um, and then when you're going to refer to this in the file, you would simply use the weave syntax, uh, the referential syntax of, uh, like, so you type this, you type methods, that's your method name, and then you type whatever value, in our case, we have the example variable that you want to provide to that method. So in our case, we're saying, hey, using this method, we're going to provide it the example, uh, the condition uh, value, and then it's going to do some logic, whatever you want to. So maybe you want to multiply it by five, divide it by three, whatever, whatever. Um, and in our case, we're actually printing the results, and then we're going to move on to something else. And this is just a very easy way. I mean, I said earlier, you can mull with variables, do a lot of programming choices. This is a much a more organized way of building functional programming, even in Inky, if you so desire. Let's close this out with some more complex conditionals. And conditionals are fundamental parts of any program. And even in Inky, this markup, you have conditionals. The most classic conditional that everybody knows is if else, or uh, if then, whatever it's called in different languages. Uh, to write this in Inky, you're just going to put a bracket, then the variable name, and then the condition. So, like for example, a sample equals zero. Then you're going to put a colon, and then everything after is going to be your argument, like what happens. Uh, you can define the else just as simple. So you're going to use this dash symbol, the word else and then a colon and that will do everything if the value is not true to whatever conditions you set up and this can by the way be made into a giant if else tree if you so desire a switch statement if you're a programmer you know what a switch statement is but it's basically if you have a variable and there's a bunch of conditions that might be true to that variable uh can also be written in this language it's just written in a very similar syntax you write the variable name colon and then using the dashes and different values you wish for be true finally we have conditional display and that's really where we're going to close out today um, and this is if you have a choice that you only want to display if something is true so in this case we have this choice you put the star for choice you can put a plus it doesn't actually matter you put the uh, choice marker and you put the condition and then you put what you want to do so what you want to display as the choice option. So in our case, if example is greater than one, this is five, I think right now, um, then display the choice moving on, and then that will finish the program. So that's the basics of Inky. I ran through it pretty quickly, but this is a pretty simple markup language that I think is pretty good for writing VNs, and it has large amounts of interoperativity with Unity. So Hope you all enjoyed it. Hopefully this helped a little. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.